last one at Bondi for a week. I guess I better enjoy this one. Chris is flying to Fiji with his father, Graham, a vet of 42 years' experience. We've got a massive veterinary care package that we're taking to Fiji today. Where is he? Is he still down at the beach? Why we're going there is that Dad was in Fiji a month ago and discovered there's only one vet for the whole of Fiji. They've got a lot of animals, and a lot of animals go without care for that fact. It was important we made this trip before, but now, after this massive tropical cyclone has ripped through the Fiji Islands, it's even more critical. Our timing couldn't be better. We're taking over all the equipment they don't already have, which is a lot, and hopefully make a difference over there. I thought you'd have it done by now. Well, it's finished here. While well, waiting for you. Dad and I are good mates, and we get along. But we get along for short periods of time. That's why I'm bringing the surfboard. Having your dad that's a vet, when you're a vet yourself, it's just this constant nagging voice, questioning. Is that how you do it? It's not how we did it in our day. Keys? What like happened to you? No, you're you joking. No, it's Keys. You haven't got them. I don't have them. I feel like you gave them to you. You did not give them to me. <sighs> Nothing's changed. What you swearing to, huh? I've never worked for Chris as long as this, so it's going to be really interesting to see how we get on together. Found them. One week, huh? Mm. Sash emergency vet Lisa Chimes has also volunteered to come on the trip. But the Brown boys are not sure how she'll cope. <laughs> Where does Lisa think she's going to Shangri-La Resort? <laughs> what are those? These shorts. You're not wearing... Is that for real? What is it with the shorts? You cannot wear those on the plane. I'm not sure what's going to be bigger, the veterinary care package or Lisa's luggage. The vet team have arrived at Nandi, Fiji's third largest population centre. Couldn't uh, help noticing your shorts. <laughs> are you serious? Did you set this I up? Told you. I told you. Yeah. Yeah. A bit too, uh, bit too flowery for uh, Fiji, eh? <laughs> but anyway, on this case, on this occasion, I'll let you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Uh. What? Thank you. Graham has already seen the SPCA vet clinic in Nandi, which is run by two volunteer vet nurses. But for Chris and Lisa, the basic premises are a reality check. Oh my God, That's, I just can't believe the condition here. This, this is a vet hospital. They've got nothing. It's incredible to believe that these vet nurses here managed to run this clinic because you're so undermanned, you're so under-equipped. You must just have so many, so many situations where you, you feel like throwing your hands up in the air. But to the credit of Lynn and Sue, they don't do that. Ah! Well, Chris is going, isn't it? Let's start. That's inside. What we're giving in these packages is so small in comparison to the passion and the commitment they actually have inside them already. The reaction from Lynn was just, it said it all, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I really don't know what to say. So I'll just start getting emotional, so it's better somebody else say something, really. <laughs> no, that's brilliant, thank you. That's stuff that we no longer have used for back home, and here it's like gold. It just warms my heart. We're heading out to a local village. We've been asked by the head man to come out and take a look at all their animals. We don't know what to expect, what we're going to have to treat, but we're going to do our best. Never seen anything like it. We've got an outdoor vet clinic under a mango tree. So we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Most of the operations today will be de-sexing. But without anaesthetic machines, even this routine surgery can be risky. We don't have any clippers here. <laughs> Old school. Blackie is Chris's first patient. She weighs 
just seven kilograms. The worry for me is, given the fact she is so skinny, it's very easy to overdose her, so we just have to be so careful with every drug we use. The surgery can't start until Blackie is completely under. No, she's feeling I don't want her to feel any pain. I don't want her to wake up in the middle of Chris doing this, so it does really get my heart rate up and make me very anxious. On their first trip to Fiji as volunteers, Chris and Lisa are learning to deal with some tough realities, performing desexing operations in the most primitive conditions. It also makes me realise how tough these people do it. I mean, this is making me panic, but I just have to try and except that I'm out of my comfort zone here. Okay, <laughs> okay little ones. And you can, you're happy to watch, but just stay away from the table because it needs to stay clean, okay? Fiji's only resident vet, Deb Hewton, has arrived from the Suva office to help with the outdoor clinic. Often villagers have never seen a vet before. A lot of the time people don't really know even what desexing is or neutering. They think it's going to decrease their um, ability to be guard dogs. Education is, is the key, and without that, we're fighting a losing battle, really. Blackie's operation has gone smoothly, and her grateful owners have witnessed the whole procedure. I'm not used to having the owners <laughs> watching my... <laughs> no, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm very happy with it. It's just different for me. I'm happy she's getting this. Hey, Blackie, you're no designer dog, are you? But you're all right. OK, you came through that well. Uncontrolled breeding just isn't on. And in a place like the Fiji Islands where there are a lot of dogs, it's important to get that message across that dogs do need to be desexed. With so little vet care available in Fiji, the Australian team are in demand. An SOS call has come from Taviuni, one of the remote northern islands savaged by a terrifying cyclone only a few days before. Now there have been a lot of reports of injured animals, so we're off to see a horse that got caught right in the middle of it. For these poor villagers, the effects of the cyclone have made the struggle to feed their families even more difficult. How are you? I'm Chris. Tukana. Tukana. This is Graham. The At the village, the team are met by the horse's owner, Takana. Now which way is the horse? It's up here. OK. Ten-year-old Dundu is suffering from a shocking wound to her flank and is in too much pain to work. How did this happen, do you know? The tin flew from the house. The tin yeah. flew off the house yeah. and hit Dundu. And hit Dundu. Oh, wow. It's a nasty wound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dundu is the village's most important possession. Without her, they can't move their crops the two kilometres down from the hills. So, to clean this wound, we need to get Dundu to an area where we have a bit of space and it's nice and level. Where Dundu has that cut is a very sensitive area. So not only does it stop Dundu from working, it's also at great risk of getting infected. And either one of those situations would be devastating for this village. River shoes. <laughs> Princess? No. For Lisa, the field work in Fiji is proving to be a constant challenge. Well done. Wow. That was the express crossing. Well done. <laughs> This job is going to be extremely difficult for the simple fact Dundu isn't used to vets. This whole situation is so foreign to her. She's not going to trust me, she's not going to know what I'm doing there. Just might sting a bit. <laughs> the scissors won't penetrate into you, that. The, the, use the scissors in the kit. Open the kit up. Yeah, but I'm still telling you, the, the point of the scissors won't get in there. It's tough, yeah. The browns. We both have a different approach to what we're doing, and possibly we're both too stubborn to change. The biggest challenge here is getting that local anaesthetic in. 
because we can't put that surgical needle through her skin and have her feel it. If that happens, she'll run away. The problem is that when the wound has occurred, as it's started to try to heal itself, it's, it's actually flattened and stretched out. And so the skin's actually quite tight. So to bring those skin edges back together and stitch them is going to be quite difficult. It's going to take quite a bit of force to bring them in. Oh, 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 oh. Easy. <laughs> We're almost done, which is lucky because the local anaesthetic's almost worn off. And she's starting to jump when this needle goes in, so the sooner we can get this last work done, the better off we're going to be. You are done. Good girl. Dundu now needs two weeks rest before she's back to work helping the village. Even though Dundun works hard, she certainly gets some pretty quality R&R &R time, kicking back by the beach, going for swims, and in all seriousness, that salt water is quite good for a wound. It will help it to heal. Alright folks, welcome to the Thank you, News of the vet team is spreading quickly. A call for help has come from the owners of a resort on Matangi Island, a 40-minute boat trip from Taviuni. It's all right, this, isn't it? That's after the cyclone. Imagine before the cyclone, it was amazing. As you know, there are 330 islands in Fiji, and there's usually just one vet in the country. So the, the chance of getting three is, uh, is a miracle for us. We're, we're really glad you guys are here. She somehow managed to do a somersault, believe it or not. Uh, she got up on her back legs in the corner and uh, flipped over and landed on the back. Lisa and Graham are on their way to examine Nigel's badly injured Maltese Terrier, eight-year-old Etty. Yesterday she got really, really bad. She could hardly walk. She, her back legs were crossing and she was tipping over. And um, then I heard you guys were coming to town and it was like angels from heaven. <laughs> because she's, she's, she's been through a lot and um, she doesn't deserve to be in pain. That's the most thing. Mm, possible. Hey, little baby. Eddie has other medical issues. She's blind and suffers from seizures. I've got it. It's OK. I'm very worried if it is a case of a spinal problem and she needs surgery and we're on this remote island here in Fiji. I don't think spinal surgery is even done in Fiji. She's just had a bath. On Fiji's remote Matangi Island, Chris is being introduced to his gargantuan patient, Miss Piggy. She doesn't like men. She just has never been keen on men. <laughs> Miss Piggy, outside. Come on, come on, Piggy. I got more. Come, come on, darling. Good girl. Piggy boo. Miss Piggy can hardly walk because of her badly overgrown nails. Cutting them is Chris's intimidating assignment. If this cycle continues of her not being able to walk, of just eating and not exercising, she'll get so fat, it'll kill her. Oh, it's all right, darling. I, I can't cut nails in mud. Move it, move it, move it. Yes, yes, move it. So how many years has she been circling now for? Two, two and a half. After falling on her back several days ago, eight-year-old Etty has been in severe pain and is finding it difficult to walk properly. See, what we're trying to determine here, Nigel, is whether there are any problems associated with her spinal cord, yeah. to see whether the reflexes are getting through to her brain. Yeah, saw that. Yeah. Eh? You saw oh, that. Oh, well, Danny, I'll stop. It's right, lower down the lumbar spine. If Eddie does need an operation on her back, there are further complications. The local airline will not allow pets to travel on their planes. If you have an emergency and your pet is in distress, what are you going to do? There's no flying doctor service like we have in remote areas of Australia. It, it would absolutely be terrifying. She's precious. She's, she needs care. And we're blessed. We are blessed to have her and able to give her a decent sort of home. Would this little room here be better or take her inside? 
Meanwhile, Miss Piggy is finally on the move and about to be barricaded so Chris can try and cut her dangerously overgrown nails. It's OK. It's OK. Lie down. Butter and bread and jam, please. Whatever you got. Just eat slowly there, all right? Because we, we just can't keep up with you. Right, there's something in her mouth. She's distracted. Enough that I can actually get the shears in there and, and trim these nails. I'm with you. Well, you're a jolly good piggy. Eat all the biscuits and shut up. I'm with you. Keeping the food supply coming is the matriarch of Matangi Island, Christine's mum, Flo. We have to make sure that she doesn't bite. Hey, 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 hey. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Just take your little backside. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. You want Miss Piggy? Here's your bread. Oh, you lady. Christine got a really nasty bite. Miss Piggy's upper and lower incisors just pushed straight through her hand, punctured it, and went right through it. Just get a towel. Get a towel. I think that's enough. You're nearly there, Mum. Okay. No, I'll count if you like. OK. And which way are you going? I'm going this way, OK, OK. Graham is not convinced Etty's inability to walk is caused by a spinal injury. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> Look at your Six. eyes after this. He's hoping this simple spin test may provide more clues. She's got normal position on the stagmas. <laughs> I'm going to say something that's going to be different to what you're expecting to hear in terms of what's wrong with her. Sure, tell okay. Me. So what we actually think is going on is that she's got a problem with her brain. It's, it's almost it's like a meningitis. Mm. So they get it's called GME and basically they get inflammation in their brain. GME can be life threatening. So there are cases where we give them medication and they don't respond. Best case scenario is that we put Etty on cortisone and she responds. Hopefully she'll stop circling, she'll be able to walk normally, she won't fall over. Um, she may never be a normal dog, but we want to get her to a point where she has a good quality of life. Thanks, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you thank respond you. to your medication now and that's an order. <laughs> Doctor's orders. Okay? Yes. <laughs> she says yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not going to lose now, Piggy. I'm not going to lose. That was close. I nearly lost then. You're right, okay? Good point. Maybe Piggy. after all, it would be Piggy. a good outcome. Chris has survived his torrid nail cutting session with Miss Piggy. Done. Yay! How did I get talked into doing that? This is a tropical island with white sandy beaches, palm trees. You go on holidays here, you don't go to hell. And hell was what we just went to. We had fun, didn't we? Kind of cute. See you later. How was your pig? Did you paint its nails? I don't talk about it. But I've got nail polish. Treat the smallest animal. Me, leave me to carry all the heavy gear again. Yeah, well, you treat the smallest animal on the island. And he keeps away from you. Boys, boys, now it's enough. Let's have a nice relaxing time, right? Hugs? No, no hugs. Let's just go. This is great. It's a great idea. Thank you. It's been amazing. It's been really, something, something we're, a bit different. Yeah, we're so much closer as a result. It is way too No, no, it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Wade. Why do you wave? Why do you wave? Well, uh, Hello. Hi. Hello. It's the vet team's last day in Fiji, and it's going to be a change of pace and scenery. It's been a pretty full on week, so I think it's time to enjoy a little bit of R&R. &R. So we've actually been invited to the world famous Nomotu Island. I didn't bring that surfboard for nothing, so it might be time to get it out and see what it can do. OK, go ahead, hop out. They're great waves. Six foot sets. They even make me look half decent. That's how good they are. I've found this trip very confronting. Fiji's animals are in desperate need of help here and the Fijians need to learn how to look after their animals. They need education and they need volunteers, vets from around the world to come and help them do that. You'd love to be able to change everything, 
to help all the animals on all the islands, but you just hope that by doing a little bit here and there, you do make a difference to those animals' lives. You show those people how to look after their animals and everyone's better off. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.